dirt cheap. And my van, I do love her, and I was just zipping around from place to place. Hi everyone, welcome to the video. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you my experience in expectation versus reality with van life. So again, this is only my experience and everyone's is different. So before I moved into my van, I, like probably like you're doing now, spent two years watching YouTube videos about people living in vans. And so I had some preconceived ideas about what it was going to be like and how I was going to live in my van. So not all those ideas turned out as I expected. And I'm gonna share with you my top five differences in this video. The first and probably the biggest difference I found was in the cost. I'm not going to lie, I expected to be living in a van to be dirt cheap and then I'd be saving tons of money. And that's not true, not true for me. So I did make a video on my 12 months 2021 expenses and I'll put a link in the description below if you want to see that. But I think it ended up costing me around $27,000 last year. The biggest differences was in petrol and food. So I had set a budget for my expenses and I set it based on my existing lifestyle. So when I lived in a house, I I drove a very small car, a Nissan Tita, and I worked from home and I hardly drove anywhere. So I could survive on about $25 a week for petrol. The differences are now that petrol has got a lot more expensive and my van, I do love her, is not very economical. I only get about seven to eight kilometers per liter. So. I can't get by on my $25 a week. My initial budget was $50 a week, but in reality, it's $100 a week. And I'm sticking to that budget. I could spend more, but I'm putting $100 in and that's how far I've got to drive in that week. The other difference was food. So when you live in a house, this is how I lived anyway, I would buy in bulk, I would cook up in bulk, I would keep lots of meals in the freezer to eat and have them ready. But I can't do that in the van. I don't have the room, I don't have the cooking facilities, I don't have a freezer. So I end up having to buy smaller packages and a lot of the time it's pre-made things that I just have to heat up. So the cost for food is definitely more and I am working actively to try and get that down this year. My second difference was where I was camping. I watched a lot of videos of people living in vans in North America, which there are a lot of on YouTube. And a lot of those people spent time camping in like Walmart parking lots or in the city on streets and things like that. And I thought that's what I was going to have to do. Given at the time, this was pre-pandemic, at the time I needed to still work and at that time my job was more land-based. I needed, to, I was still going into my clients' offices. So lucky for me, the pandemic changed all that and people got used to people working from home and I now work 100% online. I don't have to see my clients at all. And so there's no need for me to be in a city. So I spend most of my time out camping in nature and I'll go into a city and I'll spend the day there. I'll do my shopping, do whatever I need to do. And then I leave. I do never sleep in the city. Only time I did it was um, I slept in my girlfriend's driveway when I was staying with her. And apart from that, that's it. I spend all of my time out camping in nature. The third difference is the travel aspect of it. I thought I was going to be just like going crazy, going from here to there. And I did that for the first six weeks. For my first six weeks of van life, I was driving an average of a thousand kilometers a week. And I was just zipping around from place to place. I was sleeping in a different place, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, always in a different place. And now I've slowed down. It's exhausting to travel like that, absolutely exhausting. And now when I get to a nice place like this, where I have everything I need, I have place to walk Abbey, it's free. As there's a town 15 minutes away where I can get water and food. I can stay here for a couple of weeks. I have internet to work and it's just so beautiful and peaceful and relaxing. So I just stay put now for as long as I want. And when I feel like moving on, I'll move on. The fourth 
difference in my expectation versus reality is community. So again, I watch a lot of YouTube videos about people and they meet up with other van life people and they're all having a really great time. And I guess I thought that everybody I meet on the road, I would get along with and would think the same as me and we would all just be best friends. But the reality is people are on the road for different reasons. People are living out of their vehicles for different reasons and people are still people. You're not going to get along with everybody. So don't get me wrong. I have met some amazing people and I have collected a lot of phone numbers. People invited me to go to their house. But the reality is it doesn't matter where you go, where you live, people are still people and you'll get along with some and you won't get along with others and it's okay. So you definitely do still find a community and people to be friends with, but I just thought everybody, and it's not, it's not like that, it's real life out here. It is really real life. The fifth and final difference, expectation versus reality, is my van. When I first started this, I thought that I was going to live in this van for 18 months and then I was going to sell up. I didn't know if I was going to like this lifestyle. I hadn't even been camping before. So that's why I built it out with all the existing things I had in my house. I didn't want to put too much effort or cost into it because I thought in 18 months I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to upgrade to a huge, nice, big, fancy van. But you know what? That's not going to happen. I'm 16, 17 months into this experience and this van has become my home, especially once I started decorating and it feels like my home and I do not want to part with her. I really want to keep her at least for another couple of years. Um, yeah, it's just, I can't imagine getting rid of this van and getting anything different. So that surprised me. I saw a lot of other people on YouTube talk about it as their home, but it truly feels like my home now and I love it. And yeah, I just have loved going, getting in her and traveling and yeah, it's just the best. So I'm not going to get rid of her. She's staying with me. They are my five differences, expectation versus reality that I've experienced. And you know what? I, there's a few people I've had in the comments that have said they're going to do van life or they're looking forward to doing it. And my advice is make it whatever you want it to be. This is your life and you can do whatever you want. It, it doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Just do what, what feels right for you and what feels right for you at the time. Sometimes I'll sit still for a couple of weeks. Sometimes I'll be on the go for a couple of weeks. I will stay in a caravan park if I feel like it or free camp. You can live however you want to live. It's, it's your life and just make it your own and don't worry about what anyone else thinks. Don't worry about it. All right, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I want to say a big thank you to everybody that has given me a comment. I love answering your comments and it makes me feel so connected to all of you. And I'm very touched by people inviting me like, oh, when you get to this area, look me up. That's so nice. Thank you so much. And I will definitely be doing that. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And thank you so much for watching. And I hope you're all having a really great day and enjoy life because it's, it's short. You never know how long you have. All right. See you later, guys. Bye.